today on Thinking Out Loud, two conversations, one with MLA Dave Ritzy about the fire services grant that was announced on Thursday, and then a follow-up conversation on Friday with Chief Greg Jones from Amherst. This is Thinking Out Loud. I'm Sheldon McLeod, and welcome back. Um, an opportunity for me to talk about stories that I find of interest. And, of course, uh, Nova Scotia has about 7,700 volunteer firefighters, and I have been a volunteer. I know some people say, you're always trying to make it about you. No, actually, because there are so many of us involved in uh, helping each other, I think it's important to have these conversations. And I do not take it for granted that uh, I have a platform that allows me to do so. And the big announcement uh, that just came down a short time ago. More support for volunteer fire departments. And, well, to be blunt, this is the second time that the Nova Scotia government has uh, provided a grant to volunteer fire stations as well as uh, ground search rescue teams of $10,000. And it is coming at, uh, well, no strings attached. Uh, it does not it does spell out how that money is to be used. In fact, we didn't really even apply for it. Uh, Dave Ritzy is joining us. He's an MLA in the Progressive Conservative Government. He's a representative for Truro, Bible Hill, Millbrook, and Salmon River. And Dave Ritzy, it's so nice to see you again. Well, Sheldon, thank you so much for having me on here today. Uh, we had an exciting announcement today for for those 7,700 volunteers uh, right across the province. Uh, and uh, very exciting, very exciting right here in Bible Hill. What people... What? may not be aware of is that uh, Tim Houston, as opposition leader before the last provincial election, had reached out to all of the chiefs across Nova Scotia and were asking needs and wants and requirements. And I don't know that people are perhaps as aware that uh, there's been a lot of movement towards helping volunteer firefighters. What can you tell me about the needs of the members that you represent in your community? Well, I can tell you, you know, and I, I'm sure the uh, the chief Chief Joey Bisson addressed it in his comments is just that additional funding. Uh, they, they work so hard in their communities uh, trying to fundraise uh, and trying to get to that level. But with with the increased costs and, and pricing and uh, equipment costs and training that you know yourself that, that they need, uh, this support will go a long way. And, and that's that's the need in, in this community and in, in the village of Bible Hill. And that's what uh, I can say uh, for them. It's uh, it's that money will help so many different volunteers uh, in their brigade. And they're a young. They're a very young uh, brigade, too. So it's exciting for them. And uh, at the, the announcement today, did the chief who was there say how he's going to spend his money or the, the department's money? I <laughs> know, you know what, he, he, he didn't specify, but he, uh, he was very grateful, uh, very grateful, obviously, uh, in receiving uh, this, uh, this grant uh, to uh, support, support the, uh, his, his team. But like I said, you know, you talked about aging demographic. Well, this, this, this particular fire brigade uh, here in the village of Bible Hill, I tell you, it's, uh, it's, it's vibrant. Uh, and uh, this, this excites uh, these young people uh, when they see uh, investments uh, by our province in these services and, and we can't thank them enough for all that they do to protect our communities and the people that uh, reside in our communities. And I, I know that the folks with FSANS and with the departments uh, that were represented there today uh, were grateful and they thanked you. So I will thank you as well for uh, helping. I know there are close to 30 volunteer fire departments in Lunenburg County. We'll be very happy to uh, hear this news today. Yeah, very exciting. Well, Sheldon, thank you so much for having me on here today. My pleasure. Uh, David Ritzy is the Progressive Conservative MLA for Truro, Bible Hill, Millbrook, Salmon River. So as mentioned, more support for volunteer fire departments. The province saying uh, they're investing three and a half million dollars to provide one-time grants uh, to more than uh, 340 organizations province-wide with each group receiving $10,000. And I've been very uh, fortunate in the past to have uh, met uh, Chief Greg Jones from the Amherst Fire Department. He is also the president of the Fire Services Association of Nova Scotia. He was there for the announcement that was made by the government on Thursday. Uh, and uh, Chief Jones, it's so nice to see you again. Thank you. Yep, you as well, Sheldon. Good to see you today. And uh, tell me, uh, how much advance warning did you get that this $10,000 was coming to volunteer fire departments and ground search and rescue teams? Yeah, so my advance warning was uh, to head to Bible Hill, grab your uniform and go. So uh, I didn't have a whole lot of knowledge, uh, advanced knowledge of what happening. I just knew that uh, the announcement would happen yesterday afternoon and to be there. 
when we talk about a ten thousand dollar grant that is no strings attached, uh, it's not supposed to be tagged to any particular need, spend, or requirement, which is different than the emergency services provider grant. Some of the other uh, provincial funding that's come down the line. What does this tell you about either a the fire service and the condition we're in, or b the nature of this government and the relationship with fire? You know, to, to be very honest, it, it tells me that there is tremendous support for the volunteer fire service in our province. Uh, this is one more avenue. Last year, uh, we also were given a ten thousand uh, dollar, you know, basically a grant that you can use as need be uh, for each volunteer fire department and ground search and rescue and First Nations department. Uh, so again, this year it gave us an opportunity to have that little bit of funding uh, to help the departments move forward. Uh, you know, things that have been deferred in the past, this will help them uh, take care of that and also take care of themselves as well with that money. It's no secret that a $10,000 grant is a huge amount of money to some departments and it's a little drop in the bucket for others. And that, I think, is something that you addressed with the Human Resources Committee, that we need a plan, a long-term plan, if we want to have a sustainable fire service. Are those conversations happening? Yeah, so back in February 20, 28th, I had a conversation at the Standing Committee and brought that up. We need to have a long-range plan on how that looks. Uh, conversations are always ongoing when it comes to fire service in our province. Uh, and our association, uh, we're very collaborative with the provincial government uh, when we're asked to assist. Uh, and uh, so we can keep that conversation going. Uh, our hope is is that this will just keep continuing on uh, as we've had supports over the years and we'll we'll be in a position to, to help our volunteer fire service and the fire service in general uh, move forward in a prop, with a proper plan in place. Do you feel that uh, the provincial government is aware how close the system is right now to having some very serious issues with recruitment, retention, and staffing? Um, don't know. Uh, I can't speak for the government when I say that. All I can say is that uh, when we went with the standing committee, I made it very clear on uh, what the fire service looked like and the value of support. And if we didn't have support for the volunteer fire service and fire service in general, um, you know, recruitment retention would be more stretched than what it is now. Uh, a lot of departments are doing a lot of work these last few years to kind of rebuild after COVID, and COVID was a big uh, shock in the gut for all of us. It, it kind of affected the traditions of what we always do. Um, so, you know, the hope is, is that uh, they, it is clear. I know quite a few folks have received a very clear message on uh, how the fire service is currently struggling in our province. And I do know that there are a lot of departments out there, a lot of chiefs, a lot of members are trying to fix that uh, as well. Agencies having jurisdiction. Municipalities are in charge of either allowing area rates to be uh, you know, collected or, or, or assessed on properties, or they are outright funded by municipalities. But it's not the same everywhere. And that does, I think, create an unlevel playing field where some departments right now financially are on the brink. Is that a fair comment? Uh, I think so. From a person looking in at a department uh, across the province, different spots, it would look that way. Uh, without being a member of a department, sometimes it's hard to know that. But I can tell you uh, the governance pattern that we have in our province, it's various from fire commissions to municipalities to just individual departments. Uh, so we, there's all there's a mix of governance, but that's what makes us work at the moment. Now, uh, the underwriters have uh, requested information from fire departments in Lunenburg County. I'm not sure if it's the same in Amherst right now, but asking for age of apparatus, asking for level of training, asking how many full-time career staff in a volunteer setting that doesn't necessarily apply. But they're saying all of that will impact the amount of insurance people are paying to insure their home for fire coverage in the province. But again, it's not equal and it's not perhaps in some cases fair, um, I, 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 I'm asking that question in a way myself, fair that uh, when it's completely up to volunteers to fundraise a million dollars worth of equipment or your community members are going to be paying more in insurance premiums, that that feels like we're in a bit of a pickle. Yeah, so it, I, what I will say around the whole topic of underwriters uh, that's something that's happened here in our province for quite some time. Uh, the, the problem is, and, and I guess the clarity around the whole insurance industry and how it affects the fire service is that one thing for the fire service for us to do is, is continue to move forward with what we need to meet the demands in our community. Uh, and sometimes we need to sit down and have that big conversation on exactly what's required, what we need, 
what that looks like for the future. And uh, those are conversations that happen each and every day across our province in the fire service. When I see amalgamations of fire stations and communities, that then sometimes leads to closures of fire halls or fire community fire stations, which then puts that community farther from the responding agency. It's a tough conversation that just saying amalgamation is is a tough one because of the culture and the history and the heritage. And the other thing is that has a financial impact on the people who live in that community. I don't know how more clear we need to make it to people that we, we could use their help, that we could use more volunteers. Yeah, no, it, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's how, how it's communicated. Uh, the value of volunteer service, particularly in fire service across our province, uh, if we don't have volunteers, it affects our ability to be able to respond to any type of event that the fire service goes to. And when I say any type, it could be just about anything, as you know, uh, at a heartbeat we could get called away at. Uh, so it's extremely important that uh, we, we have the right tools, the right capabilities to go, and the right personnel as well. Uh, anybody can be a volunteer firefighter. Anybody could be a, a, a career firefighter as well. Uh, it just takes that one opportunity to, to go to a station to have that conversation and, and join up. Um, but those are the things that are really important to the fire service in our province that we need to focus on. We need to focus on that equipment, our needs going forward, and operationally, we need to function 100%. Yeah, we had a, a community member step forward just before COVID. He had retired from his job and said he had time to give. He's now 70 years old and still giving to the to the community, saying not everyone has to be an interior attack firefighter. That's correct. Yeah, not everybody needs to be interior attack, and not everybody needs to be up in the thick and thin of everything. There's all kinds of support functions, all kinds of other jobs that can be done, not only on a scene, but also at the fire station. Uh, fire station, it's, as I mentioned before, it's like one big family, uh, and there's all kinds of little jobs that we can all do and be part of, to volunteer to be part of at the end of the day. Well, Chief, this uh, $10,000 grant, uh, second year in a row for it, and I don't know, is the government setting up an expectation that this is going to ha- happen every year now? Uh, that is unclear. Uh, that'll be a good conversation to have with government. One thing I will say, though, uh, and one thing that's been a bonus for the volunteer service and ground search and rescue and First Nations is it gives us the opportunity to take away that $10,000 burden this year. I know there's many departments out there in our province that uh, they're still struggling coming out of COVID. Uh, they're still trying to make things work. And even with COVID still floating around, uh, it does still affect the fire service at the end of the day. So I, I don't know what the full intent would be, uh, but I'm worried about the here and now. And the here and now is, is that departments will have ten thousand dollars to help them this year and then the other conversation will happen after 2025 when municipal units are responsible for picking up the uh, workers compensation premiums for the expanded coverage for presumptive cancers which that's going to that's going to happen in an election year right after a municipal election so that that i think will be the conversation of going into 2024 yeah and that's possible um i will tell you i'm a very strong proponent of the presumptive cancer coverage that we do have in our province. Very proud of the fact that we cover 19 cancers here, and, and we were the second province or territory in our country to do that. Uh, so we wrote in front of that. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of work done by the fire service in our province uh, at sessions that were done across the province and meetings that we had as well. So, um, you know, there is a cost at the end of the day for cancer coverage, but it's very important that we do cover our members and we take care of each other. And uh, last word to you, Chief. Anything else that uh, is important to this conversation that we haven't touched on? You know, the very important thing of this $10,000 amount uh, is the fact that it takes away that burden. Uh, and the importance that uh, our volunteer fire service and ground search and rescue and First Nations fire departments, those folks all leave their families, they leave their home, they leave their workplace to go out and support each other and all other Nova Scotians. And that's the most important thing of this whole announcement is this does help them. It helps them. It boosts their morale. It gives them some much needed support and will hopefully help all of us right across the board. He is the president of the Fire Services Association of Nova Scotia, representing, I believe, around 7,700 firefighters province wide. Uh, he's also the chief of the Amherst Fire Service. Uh, chief Greg Jones, uh, thank you again for your time. I appreciate this. Thank you, Sheldon.